Today guys, I'm here to show you how to pass the Network Plus exam in two weeks. I'm going to keep this video nice, short, and sweet, and we're going to go over a couple of things like all the resources that I used, and maybe the most common topics that you should definitely be studying, and a few other concepts later on in the video. If you are new to my channel, I am Ryan, I'm a system administrator, and I have a number of certifications including the Network Plus. And I'm really here to just share everything that I can to help you guys pass just the same. Now, the first thing that we're gonna review is all the resources that I've used. Uh, number one, we are going to be using Professor Messer's video series. Professor Messer has been part of this CompTIA creating videos um, on Network Plus, Security Plus, A Plus, and has an awesome playlist. It's very informative and gets you a really good foundational base, especially if you're just starting out. He explains everything in immense detail. And while his video series does run quite long, I highly suggest it over nearly anything else um, just to build, like I said, that foundation for uh, passing the exam. Now, let me show you guys Professor Messer's YouTube channel. So if you head over here and hit his playlist, you can see some playlists here. One of these is for the Network Plus. So you can go ahead and hit play all and you'll notice there's 102 videos. They're not that long in content, but it will take you quite a while to get through all of this stuff. To speed things along personally, I used it as essentially like an audiobook where I would leave these on and listen to it day to day, whether I'm driving or commuting to work or school and things of that nature. And it really helped my learning experience because not everybody likes to just sit down, stare at a screen, and listen to somebody talk. It reminds me and gives me PTSD about my college days listening to professors. And it's just not for everybody, you know? So again, I learn and retain really well with audio. I got through the material in just a few days and I was able to retain a ton of it. I can't recommend Professor Messer's videos enough, okay? Please head over to it and get through every single video and try to retain as much information as you can. You can go ahead and take notes, use flashcards, use the audio system that I've used. Whatever works for you, do that. Also keep in mind, you don't have to cram everything in two weeks. There is a lot of information on this exam. So if you're starting out in two weeks is just a little bit too much for you, please, please just expand that time. You can just do it over a few months rather than a few weeks and it may work again better for you. So the most important thing is go at your own pace. So now after you got through all of those Professor Messer videos, the next very best thing in my opinion is going over to Udemy and getting Jason Dion's course. Now there's a few ways to get this. You might, if you already have an account, have to pay full price, which is 90 bucks. If you create a new account, it will be 16 as you see here on the screen. And then there's another option, which if you're cramming in a short amount of time, there is a trial version of Udemy. The trial will last about a week and you will be able to get to this exam or this course rather, um, totally free. And again, it'll last just a week, but that should be a good amount of time to be able to retain a lot of this knowledge. If you are planning on studying over a longer period of time, over a couple of months, I do suggest creating a new account and getting this sale, as you can see on the screen. Now, just one thing to mention, Jason Dion does have his own course, although it's very similar to the way Professor Messer does his coursework. So I personally would suggest doing Professor Messer, watching his videos, and then heading over to the six practice exams that Jason Dion releases. And it is a lot of questions, as you can see here, 90 questions, one, two, three, four, five, six different exams. And each exam is totally different questions, nothing repeats, so these are all unique questions. Just be sure when you answer, finish the exam, and you will see all of the responses. Best part about it is learning from all the mistakes that you had or answers you got wrong. It gives you a really good explanation of each question, why answers are wrong or correct, and it's a fantastic tool to learn. One really important tip is don't repeat the same exam over and over again because you're going to end up memorizing the questions and you don't want to memorize the questions, you want to retain the information that's within the questions. Fully understand why it's wrong or why it's correct. So out of all of my resources, Udemy and all of these practice exams are definitely going to be where most of my time is going to be and I do highly suggest it's where most of your time should be. One of the hardest things for me personally for written exams is being able to read through a longer problem 
retaining all of the details in the problem and then answering the questions, especially over the course of an hour or two hour exam. Long factor open ended questions, you just have to make sure that you're used to these long winded exams, it could be quite fatiguing on your brain. Trust me, you don't want to get fatigued during the exam. So make sure you practice these practice exams from start to finish because they replicate the amount of time that the actual exam will take. So moving on from Udemy, we have exam compass. Now this is going to be the free version of all of the practice exams. Now one thing to note that these do not betray the actual questions on the exams are not even close, but they do give you so much detailed information um, on all of the little facts and ports and things like that. So make sure you head over to this and take their practice exams. They have them by category, which is also really nice because if you know you're weak in something like subnetting, then make sure you take their subnetting quiz and really drill down on everything that you need to understand. Now you shouldn't spend too much time on exam compass, but it does give you a good refresher on all of the material and it will tell you where you are weak or where you are strong by the category. Now, one of the last things that I do recommend is if you have some extra time and you really want to make sure you studied enough, I personally definitely overstudied for the network plus exam. I did a lot more material than just these. And a lot of that material was completely useless, which is why I'm only showing you these couple things, because if you get down these couple things, then I guarantee you that you will have a very high chance of passing as long as you didn't take any shortcuts with this. But the exam cram book is really helpful for right before you take the exam. If you can bang out this book in a day or two days or three days, it will again solidify all of the information that you knew and throw it into this book. And I would suggest reading through the book as your last step of studying before you take your exam. The book itself has a couple of questions per uh, section, I would say, and it tells you if you should actually reread the section or if you should go over like the key points in each chapter. It is really nice to read and it's really easy to skim through. If you know you're strong or weak in certain subjects, again, you can go through the book and find those sections really easily. Now for some really quick tips, Network Plus actually, I had a different approach with it compared to the Security Plus exam where I used a lot of flashcards because you need to understand a ton of definitions, a ton of ports, and a too many acronyms. And that's where, for me personally, Anki, I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, is a free flashcard website app that you can download. And if you fill these flashcards out with the little things like port numbers and the acronyms and maybe some definitions or vocab words that you don't know, this is where you should do it. And I would suggest just reviewing these things daily. You can do it a ton of different ways. There's a lot of different techniques on studying or memorization online, and these Flashcards are used as memorization. There are things that you can memorize and it's very useful. A lot of people tell you, don't memorize, make sure you understand everything perfectly. Well, I would say that memorizing port numbers and acronyms is super important. Of course, you want to be able to understand the acronyms definitions, but you're not going to know the acronym definitions if you don't know what the acronym stands for. So that's how I use these flashcards personally. And I do highly suggest a technique like that. And it usually works for a lot of people. And that brings me to, of course, ports. Port numbers are very important on the Network Plus exam, although there's not a lot of questions that do cover port numbers, but you do want to get those ones correct because if it's just talking about ports, it's pretty easy couple of questions getting answered correctly just for memorizing a small list of numbers. I wouldn't spend too much time on this. And actually that's the same way for subnetting. A lot of people panic with subnetting because it is one of the more complicated things to actually learn during the Network Plus exam. And while subnetting is really useful for career and job experience and things like that, or even job interview questions, don't stress too much on this exam if you're not the best at subnetting because you will only get a small handful of questions on that. There is a lot more material on just troubleshooting in general and doing like uh, what is the best answer type scenarios where each answer might be correct, but there's only one that's the best solution. So that's why you really need to drill down on all of the details and information on how everything works with the Network Plus exam. 
And that's pretty much the pain point, at least for me, when actually studying and trying to retain everything is you need to make sure that you know how everything actually works. And if you don't know how everything actually works and you're just memorizing things, you're going to have a lot of trouble during the exam because it is challenging. It's not the easiest thing in the world. And besides port numbers, definitely know the OSI model. That comes up a billion times and just understanding it will help you throughout your entire career here and after during either interviews or things like getting on a conference calls or meetings and things like that. There's always some type of information that surrounds the OSI model. The way you troubleshoot things is really important. And most people do use OSI model as a guideline, more or less. As for the video guys, this is pretty much it. These are the four things that I recommend the most. Definitely drill down in your Udemy practice exams out of anything else. That's probably the most important because it replicates the exam closer than anything else. And one other tip I do recommend is just schedule your exam. Either schedule it a few weeks from now, schedule it a month, schedule it three months from now, however you want to do it. But just purchase and schedule that exam because that will really push you to study and not procrastinate because I love, absolutely love procrastinating and I know tons of other people do too. So scheduling it ahead of time will really push you to actually create a schedule around studying to complete it before your actual exam due date. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everything and please like, subscribe and comment if you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.